The Summer Birds by Penelope Farmer, Part 1, 3. The boy seized her hand again and pulled her to her feet. Come on, he cried joyfully. I feel alive again. It was a death in there. Chalk, ink, paper death. How could you bear it? I want to run now now till I've no breath left. They ran over the grass of the meadow between the sun and the buttercups. The cool breeze on their foreheads, easy as deer. Charlotte, holding tight to his hand, thought she had never gone so fast. The close heat of the classroom was no more. She felt only freedom and air and laughed to run, her hair streaming behind. Perhaps this was how swallows felt skimming over the lawn. They flung themselves down at last under the trees, panting to regain their breath. Charlotte lay flat on her tummy and felt the soft grass on her face and an insect wandering over her legs. The boy was silent for a while, wondering about something, it seemed to Charlotte, who turned her head sideways to watch him. How would you like to fly? he asked suddenly, sitting up and hugging his knees. Charlotte felt a flicker of excitement, but knowing that such things did not happen in an ordinary world, she only said practically, What in an aeroplane? What in an airplane? No, I don't think perhaps I would. I should be frightened. Why, have you got one? No, goose, said the boy, mocking again. I mean, fly as a bird. I can teach you if you want. Round-eyed Charlotte darted. Round-eyed Charlotte dared not believe him. She sat up on her knees and looked at him. But how can I fly? She said, it's impossible. Only birds can fly. Nonsense, he answered her scornfully. Nonsense, nonsense. Watch me. He leaped gracefully, easily into the air, circled Charlotte, laughing at her astonishment, and came softly to the ground in front of her. See, Doubter, he said. Now watch. Before she could overcome her surprise, she found herself performing. Under his instruction, a whole string of exercises to develop her flying techniques and make her accustomed to the movement. She had to push her arms as though she were swimming, do knee bends to strengthen her leg muscles, circle her wrists and ankles so they would be supple and easy for flying action. When she had done each of these in turn, she had to do all of them together, lying on her stomach in the grass and practicing till she was breathless and exhausted. She found it nearly impossible, like trying to beat out a different musical rhythm with each hand at the same time. But at last the boy seemed satisfied and had her climb onto a fallen tree trunk, and jumped from there using her arms and legs as he had shown her. She landed with a jarring bump on the grass. The boy showed her again, patiently, no longer mocking. He hovered in the air and came quite slowly to the ground. Charlotte tried once more, but this time nearly twisted her ankle. The boy was relentless, more relentless than Miss Halibut. Try again, he said. Try again, the knack will come. But although she was trying very hard, the knack seemed slow to reach her. She felt like a baby thrush first learning to fly, flopping off a branch without wind in its wings. Then Charlotte found herself staying in the air for a while. At the first realization, she was so alarmed that she fell to the ground again with a bump. Yet slowly, she became used to feeling, she became used to the feeling of flight. As a learning skater grows to skate, grows to skates, she became bolder, and the boy decided that she was ready to to fly properly. She climbed with him, up the nearest tree, up and up, the rough bark scraping her hands, the wood living and moving under her feet, up and up the leaves brushing her face, till they swayed precariously on the highest branch that would bear their weight. The ground seemed to whirl the way, swaying and receding between the leaves of the tree, twig on twig, branch on branch, gold and green beneath them mingled with the same sunlight, which caught her on the side of the head and splashed the boy's shirt. She could feel the warmth of it on her hair. The purr of wood pigeons filled her ears, and she was more frightened than she had been in the whole of her life. But she was determined not to show it before the boy's mocking smile, so she shut her eyes, clutched the rough wood, and waited. No, stop till we reach the oak tree, he whispered. Or, no, stop till we reach the oak tree, he whispered. Are you ready? Now jump, jump! Somehow she left the living swaying tree, The leaves touched her face. She brushed through them and came out into the full glare of the open meadow, 20 feet above the ground. She was flying, but it was not easy as birds seem. She was flying, yet still the right rhythm would not come. For a second it was there. She swooped delightfully over the grass, and in a flash it had gone, and she was left struggling in midair, left her leg arm moving one after the other, like a swimmer in difficulties. By the time the tree was only a few yards behind them, She was exhausted, envious of swallows. She ached all over, and her breath came in gasps. 
I can't do it, she gasped. Of course you can, goose, cried the boy, hovering easily and laughing at her struggles, but not unkindly. Push together, move your ankles more, and your arms. Don't flap wildly like a worried hen, together. And quite suddenly she understood. Her movement ceased to be choppy and hurried like a frightened swimmer's, but slowed to an easy acceptance of rhythm, the pull of the arms, the turn of the ankles, in, out, together. Soon she was sitting jubilant on the branch of the oak tree. Eager for more, she shut her eyes and jumped out again into the sunlight. For one terrible moment, she thought she had lost the knack. She was struggling, flapping, yet suddenly it was there again, the wholeness, the lightness, the, mo the lightness of movement. She skimmed over the meadow, wind soaked with the ease of swallows. She wondered how she could have thought that running was like a swallow flying. That was, this was different, extraordinary, ecstatic, yet she could not make a swallow's angled swoop. Yet still, she could not make a swallow's angled swoop. Skim up and away, sudden to turn. The boy showed her, but when she tried, she nearly landed on her nose in the grass. So she stayed level in flight, and whenever she had to descend or ascend, she went slowly with care. Well done, Charlotte, the boy shouted. Approval, the boy shouted approval beside her. Well done, you'll not forget it now. But it was tiring all the same, and she was glad when they collapsed at last in the long grass at the far corner of the meadow and lay there panting, the fronds of grass waving above them and the shrill grasshoppers all around, and the shrill grasshoppers all around. And that is the end of chapter three.